faint rattle of a sneaky snake. Yeah. All right, I'm back again. See if we can finish this damn thing up. Just to give you a good idea of how funky these things get after a while. This is really just due to the nature of how a PCV system works. There you go, that's, uh, that's the back side. You know, same on this one. Yeah, so I'm glad we're getting in here and cleaning these up. Yeah, check that out. Get in there, yep. Yeah. It's pretty easy to understand how these can get gummed up and really screw with your performance. Well, I'm just doing this so that we know how these little brackets are going to go back on when I take these cables off. So, 7 millimeter.
Last step I'm going to be doing, I've cleaned these surfaces off. Last thing I need to do is uh, clean up these intake ports. You can see uh, the 
pretty nasty, but. Jesus Christ. Okay, so you can see down there. Um, it shows why it's important uh, to keep crap from falling into your uh, intake port so you don't have crap going into your engine. But uh, you can see it's hard to do this at the same time. Um, some of these you can tell where the intake valves are actually open like I can actually see down to the piston so um, You'll definitely want to make sure that um, You rotate the engine over by hand to close any valves that are open so that when you're cleaning You don't have any huge chunks of crap falling down into the cylinder um, Yeah, that's a bad one right there That's super caked up so yeah, that's what we'll be doing now. And then once that's done, uh, we'll put everything back together. All right, so uh, I've just got these last four ports here. Um, these are the only ones I had to put off um, just because these valves are open. You can see partially open there and right here. So. You know, I had those plugged out the whole time and then uh, I took care of all the other ones. Um, so I'm just gonna plug the other ones up and make sure that nothing falls down into those while I'm cleaning these ones. Um, so I've got uh, uh, I've got the ratchet hooked on to the crank snout here and then uh, I'm just gonna turn the engine over slowly and keep my eye on these valves uh, for when they closed and then we're good to go. So, I've just got this nylon brush attachment on the drill. Um, just take it uh, easy on a low setting after you spray some stuff in there and we'll just work it off, agitate it off of uh, these uh, bore walls right here and make sure that none of the valves are open when we're doing that and we should be good and then we'll vacuum all these ports out um, before we seal everything back up.
these are starting to clean up a little bit here. You know, I've, I've gotten you uh, some before stuff. You can see, you know, this all the way on the right here, one of these secondary ports, you can tell that there's actually metal under that. <laughs> it was all just caked in black crusty crap before. So uh, now you can see uh, this is probably going to be worth it. Um, I'm going to do some touch-up work, but you know, it's it's finally coming along here. You know, if I can make them look relatively close to the primaries, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. But that's where we're at so far. I don't think I got any uh, decent footage of this yet, so I hate to waste it because this is super, super satisfying. Hang on. Now it's focusing on the damn light. Sorry, this is the only way I was able to get it with this particular light, but okay, there we go. Check this out. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure all the real engine builders and whatnot are just cringing. I am being as gentle as I can. I'm not using really any pressure. I'm just kind of dragging this across. I'm not pushing into the metal. Uh, like I said, you know, unless I'm putting some serious gouges, I don't think this is going to be that bad for the engine. I'm just worried about gouging up mating surfaces for vacuum leaks, that kind of thing, but oh god, this is awesome. So yeah, I can't really do a, a very effective job while I'm holding this, but I just wanted to, wanted you guys to see what I was talking about. Just how thick it is. It's just peeling off like in layers. So, yeah. All right, I actually got a hold of a better light here. Um, pretty much done. Um, this is, this was a lot of work here, but you know, I'll, I'll do a, a split screen or whatever when I edit this video, but you can see the, the round ports, those are the secondaries. Those are the ones that were just completely black, caked with all that stuff. So I've got them looking a little bit more like the primaries. Um, so yeah, I'm probably at this point gonna call it good. And, uh, you know, let a can of sea foam or some intake valve cleaner through the intake when the car is running. I'll probably let that uh, take care of the rest. Um, but I, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm I'm really glad that uh, I went ahead and scraped all that crap out. All right, so didn't film most of the reassembly because it's just the reverse of uh, the disassembly. Um, all you need to know is when you're doing the hold down tabs for the fuel rails, those are your torque specs. So you'll tighten out that down first and then you'll move to the intake manifold stuff. All those bolts are gonna be 15 to 22 pound feet. And then you have these inner ones, that's where you're gonna start though. One and two are the inside ones. Right there, and then there's one right there. So those are gonna be 71 to 106 inch pounds and then you follow the rest of the sequence. Okay, so this is always the scary part after you get everything put back together because in my experience, nine times out of 10, there's always something that gets missed. Um, yeah, you know, worried about did the fuel rail seat properly and you're gonna have an injector sprayed all over the place or uh, whatever. So yeah, we're gonna see what happens. Uh, Got the battery hooked up and uh, first thing we'll uh, prime the fuel system, give, uh, give the key a couple of turns and listen for the fuel pump. 
All right, I heard it once. I don't hear any dripping outside. Let's do it again. Okay, and let's do it one more time. All right, so first thing, let's check and make sure I don't have any fuel leaking. Giving it the sniff test. I don't smell anything over there. My flashlight to double check. I don't smell anything over here either. Yeah, I think we're good, so make sure I've got uh, all my lines hooked up right here. Yeah, I think we're good, so. Go ahead and get back in there. I won't let it run for long, uh, assuming that it runs because I need to top up the coolant, but uh, I just want to see if it's going to crank and fire. So here we go. That was something. She's a runner. Took a little while to fire. I think I had to get a lot of fuel up to the, the rail or something. Pressure was kind of weak, but. So we're running okay so far. So we'll just, uh, we'll let it go for too long because we got a little bit less than normal coolant. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So, yeah, let the good times roll.